Turn it up! Okay. Black Rock just came out and asked for the volume to be turned down. Um, People are asking for it to be turned up. Introducing themselves who are here in support. I'm, I'm not able because of time to uh, add speakers to our list. But I did want to mention that uh, here today in introduce, uh, introducing herself is Maggie Tuttle from Children Screaming to be Heard. Um, a very valuable charity that looks after children in care. Uh, she has a thousand cases at the moment, many of whom can't get legal aid, which is absolutely outrageous. Uh, Maggie is at the front, if anyone wants to meet her or find out more about her charity, raise your hand um, or check out their website on www.childrenscreamingtobeheard.com. It's a very valuable call. Thank you for being here, Maggie. Which, which reminds me, having heard now from three lawyers in succession, that it's not about the lawyers, it's not about the money, it is about justice, it is about the cause, it's about the fight to clear people's names, and it's about the client. So our next speaker is a, a client, someone who has the benefit of legal aid, who spoke very eloquently uh, on the uh, media this morning, um, and will probably do better at sticking to the three minute time limit than uh, others. So um, can I call up to the stage uh, our next speaker, Francis Nettles. Unlike most of the other speakers here today, you wouldn't have heard of me. I'm not a leading QC or judge. I've not been the victim of an infamous disguise of justice. What I am is an ordinary working family man, and I once was nearly the victim of the miscarriage of justice, the kind which could happen to anyone. Cases like mine and people like me are why access to justice is important for all. This is my story. A couple of years ago, there were some kids local to where I live causing problems with their anti-social behavior. One day I stood in my doorway and asked one particular boy to quiet him down. His response was to walk up to my garden path and assault me. I grabbed the boy's wrist to stop him from hitting me, mashed him off my property and back onto the pavement. I thought that what I had, that I thought but what I had done was perfectly reasonable and in lawful self-defense. My brother had called the police, but when they arrived, they spoke to the boy first, and he accused me of assaulting him. The police made a seemingly immediate decision that he must be telling the truth, and I ended up charged with common assault. If I was convicted, I could have gone to prison. I wouldn't have lost my job I may well have ended up on welfare. Who knows what it would have done to my mental well-being. My life would have been ruined and my family affected too. And whilst my life may not matter to Chris Gailey, it damn well matters to me. <laughs> Prior to this, I had always assumed that any criminal prosecution would be fair, that all of the evidence Whichever side is supported would automatically be served so that the court could make a just decision. But this was not the case. The evidence presented against me was very one-sided. I was referred to a dedicated, dedicated criminal defense firm of solicitors. They would not allow my trial to go ahead without disclosure of material which showed that my version of events was a truthful one. But a Crown Prosecution Service repeatedly refused to serve this material until finally, at my solicitor's request, and after much argument, the court ordered that it will be released. I was tried, and I was acquitted. <laughs> Had I represented myself, I thought I would have obtained the healthy material which the GPS stood firm in its refusal to assist. You, you only realize the power of the state when you're personally up against it. My finance meant that I was granted legal aid. I could not have afforded to pay privately, especially for the extensive work, for the extensive work which needed to ensure I received a fair trial. Without my legal aid assistance, I could easily have been found guilty of something I could not do, I did not do. And it was only the determination effort which secured the evidence which helped me prove my innocence. Sadly, it seems the police 
and the CPS can as always be relied upon to investigate and prosecute failings. This is no doubt affected by the budget cuts they themselves face. But this makes it all the more important that the defense is properly funded to make up for the deficiencies in the prosecution and to ensure that justice can be done. These funding cuts will amount to denial of justice by the back door for ordinary people like me. Because without an effective public, public, publicity funded defense, this charge of justice will happen. You can't keep cutting legal aid without affecting how well defense lawyers can do their job. And when this charge of justice happens to ordinary people like me, there won't be public inquiries or campaigns to highlight our cause. There will simply be quiet every day, injustice, and all the appalling consequences which follow. Chris Galen says he can't afford to fund legal aid. Francis Lakers say we cannot afford not to. Uh, next up, also someone from a crime perspective uh, with a moving story, Noella Clay.